Thank you everyone for coming today. We're going to be talking about GrabCAD print and why it's a useful tool for 3D printing. Before we get too far into what GrabCAD is, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that are in the industry right now. So um, GrabCAD print is a slicer software and anybody that's used a hobbyist printer knows that slicers can be very, very complicated. Oftentimes there's a lot of dials that you have to twist and turn and slicers, some slicers work with one set of printers and then another set of slicers works with a different set of printers. And the ones that kind of cover all the printers can have their own nitpicks as well. So overwhelmingly slicers are a complicated tool. And even if you know how to use your slicer, if you have a bad STL, if there's some self intersections or a missing face, that's going to uh, seriously uh, create a challenge with your print quality. And then if, if you've got a part in your slicer and you've sliced it up and you're ready to print it, but you realize that you want to make some changes to it, oftentimes those changes have to be made back at the design level, not at the slicer level. For doing color prints, there's a big challenge in the industry right now with if you're printing in color, um, making sure that those colors are accurate each and every time that they're printed. And once you've printed those colors, if you're trying to color match something, oftentimes it requires reprints and reprints to get the color exactly right. And lastly, a big challenge right now is machine coordination. So if you're trying to coordinate multiple types of printers, um, you know, over two or three areas, that machine coordination, especially within a slicer software, isn't something that's super popular right now. So thankfully, as you can imagine, GrabCAD print is going to address all of these challenges. So keep these in mind as we're going through and you'll see all of these questions and challenges get answered. So a little bit of the agenda. We're going to talk about what exactly is GrabCAD. We're going to talk about Stratasys and its lineup of 3D printers. We're going to go over the basics, what GrabCAD looks like. Then we're going to go through an FDM example a polyjet example and end with a Q&A session. So to start off, what exactly is GrabCAD? Uh, GrabCAD is a company that was purchased by Stratasys in 2014. They have several different offerings and they're all related to 3D printing. So the first one is the GrabCAD community. This is an area where people share their 3D printing projects it's kind of like a GitHub or there's other sites on the internet where people can post their projects and updates with it. There's a revision management system called GrabCAD Workbench. So this is a free system where you can iterate on your designs and keep your old revisions, share it with people. There's a 3D printing slicer called GrabCAD Print. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And then there's a manufacturing order manager. So uh, if you have a service bureau or a shop and you're trying to coordinate all these different uh, printers and other machines like CNC mills, coordinating where all your files are going, that's what GrabCAD shop is for. So we're going to be focusing on GrabCAD print today. And like I said, what is GrabCAD print? It's essentially a slicer program. A slicer, for anybody that's not familiar, is a, it's a program that takes a 3D model such as an STL or a SOLIDWORKS part and it's going to cut that into several different slices. Those slices are then sent to the printer and the printer is going to print slice by slice your 3D part. So there's a lot of different slicers out there. Um, this one is used exclusively with Stratasys machines. So um, since GrabCAD was purchased by Stratasys, they've put a lot of resources into GrabCAD print and making it super user friendly for the Stratasys machine lineup. Part of it being user friendly is the fact that it looks like CAD. So GrabCAD print, anybody that's used SOLIDWORKS or an Autodesk or another 3D modeling program, it's going to have a very familiar feel to it as opposed to some of the other slicers that are out there. GrabCAD print's also able to track print jobs for multiple machines. So 
here in my office in Bellevue, Washington, I've got four machines on my GrabCAD print server, and I can look at those parts at any time for my cell phone, for my laptop, track prints. Um, it's a very useful tool just beyond it being a slicer program. And lastly, you can set up part properties such as infill, slice height, orientation, uh, scaling, support creation. And the best part about this is that the software is free. So after this presentation, if you're interested in it, you can go to GrabCAD and download the software and you can play around with it yourself. So it's a really useful tool in that sense that you can go and see if it's going to be the right software for you uh, without needing to purchase it. So with that, let's get a little bit into the Stratasys lineup of machines. Since this is a dedicated Stratasys product, it's only going to work with the Stratasys lineup. So Stratasys is a 3D printing company. Right now they offer a few different 3D printing technologies, and we're going to cover their biggest two. The first one is FDM, or Fused Deposition Modeling. This is the most popular 3D printing technology in the world, both for hobbyist use and for industrial use. Stratasys invented the technology in the late 1980s, and it's essentially a hot glue gun, except instead of using glue, it's using a thermoplastic filament. So there's a hot nozzle, you're pushing a filament through that hot nozzle, and there's a gantry that's laying down that bead of hot plastic um, layer by layer. So in this little GIF here, you can see that layer by layer, the filament's being laid out. Uh, Stratasys machines are uh, kind of unique in the industry because they have two different types of material that they use. There's a model material and a support material. So the model material, this is your ABS, ASA, PLA, the normal types of 3D printing plastics you'll see, but the support material is actually dissolvable most of the time. So this allows you to create really unique and custom geometries that are only available when you 3D print additive manufacturing. So an overview of the different materials in the portfolio. Uh, I tried to categorize them into some recognizable groups. You've got your standard plastics like ABS and ASA. That's stuff like Legos are made out of and some car parts. We have a rubber-like elastomer for printing flexible parts. We have electrostatic dissipative filaments for uh, circuit board assemblies and other sensitive electronic components. There's a low friction part for a part on part movement, and it's also non marring, which makes it a great end effector material. We have high strength parts or high strength filaments like nylons and polycarbonates. We actually have a carbon fiber blend as well. We have some chemical thermal resistant materials that are really popular in the aerospace industry. And then lastly, we have some specialty materials like certified aerospace materials, certified food grade materials the like. So this is a really big part of the Stratasys portfolio and GrabCAD print covers all of these different materials um, as well as manipulating different uh, qualities of the parts as you'll see later on. So that's FDM. We're gonna look at Polyjet next. Polyjet is a different animal entirely. It's very similar to an inkjet printer Instead of laying down a single bead of hot plastic, it's actually laying down a liquid resin layer by layer. And uh, when, it, when the head moves back and forth, it's also curing that liquid into a solid using an ultraviolet light. So it, it jets out a photopolymer that hardens in the presence of ultraviolet light. And this is not so much a technology for um, form, fit, and function, like you can with the FDM materials that are really strong. This is really uh, high fidelity modeling, very high accuracy and high fidelity printing technology. So it prints at a layer thickness of up to 14 microns, so very high accuracies. Since it's a photopolymer, it's not something that's nearly as easily recognizable like ABS or polycarbonate. The basic materials are broken down into there's rigid materials, there's flexible materials, there's materials for the medical and dental industry, 
think like 3D printing some Invisalign uh, retainers. And then we have heat resistant materials that are really useful for blow molding, injection molding, and other high temperature applications. And the best part about these is that the rigid and the flexible materials come in many different colors. And you can mix those colors together to create what Stratasys calls digital materials. So mixing up to three different colors and flexible materials at a time, you can create many, many, many different combinations, over 500,000. So here's a cool example that I like to use. This is a uh, car console that was 3D printed. The top part is leather and it's actually flexible. If you were to touch that, it would flex under your finger. They were able to mix some of the rigid with the flexible materials to create just a slightly soft to the touch type of material. And it was also able to print out this cool wood grain texture on the outside of the part. And this was all printed in a single print job. So that's kind of the power of the polyjet system. The main difference between the two systems, as far as the materials, is that one, it's a thermoplastic, which means that it's a, it can be remelted and resolidified over and over again without much loss. So if you imagine a chocolate bar, you can melt that down and then you can uh, let it cool and it'll turn back into a chocolate bar. Whereas with Polyjet, it's a thermoset material. So once it's cured, there's no going back to the original resin state. So like wheat turning into a saltine cracker, you can't really turn a saltine back into wheat. That's not how it works. So. That's kind of the overview of the Stratasys technologies. And both of these technologies are incorporated into GrabCAD print. So without further ado, why don't we just go ahead and take a tour of GrabCAD print. So I'm gonna switch screens. And now we are in GrabCAD print land. So this is what the main screen looks like. Like most Windows programs at the top, you've got your file, edit, view, help. Um, that's where, you know, inserting files and doing that kind of work is done. First thing that you'll probably notice is this build tray in the middle here. Like I said, anybody that's familiar with CAD is going to recognize kind of the controls here. So we can change the orientation of the build tray. We can rotate it in 3D space. We can move it around. What's really nice about this is that um, each of the build trays in GrabCAD um, actually has units associated with it. So each of these squares is two inches by two inches. So if we were to insert a model, say a one inch by one inch by one inch cube, um, you can see that this, you can get a sense of the scale of your part right off the bat, which I think is a very useful a thing to have, especially when you're about to start your print job. So you kind of saw here we can add models by going over here to the add models tab. If we take a look at all the different types of files you can insert, you can insert normal ones like STLs, IGS, um, step files, but you can also insert uh, raw CAD files. So a SOLIDWORKS part file, uh, a CATIA file, a solid edge, or a pro e file, those can all natively be inserted into GrabCAD, which uh, is just one less step in the process of converting your 3D model into a print job. So if we go ahead and take a look, we can see that there's um, kind of three main sections over here. These we can switch to a sliced view from our raw model view. And we can play a little animation if we wanted to get a get a sense of how this is going to print. You can also go over here to the bottom and get an estimate of how long this part is going to take to print. One thing about slicers is that since so many slicers out there uh, are compatible with so many different types of printers, there isn't a lot of resources dedicated to a single printer. And since Stratasys owns GrabCAD, 
the GrabCAD team's really been able to hone in and get very accurate model material estimates and print time estimates. So, whereas with some slicers, you'll have a 20, 10 to 20% error margin with your print time, you can really plan around this being a very accurate number. Over here, like I mentioned, this program is free. And what's great, what's also great about this program is that you can print or you can choose so many different printer templates. So we have every currently offered FDM printer that Stratasys makes available, and you can just go ahead and select it. So if we wanted to select the largest printer that Stratasys sells, the F900, we could go over here and you can see we could print a lot of one inch cubes here. These are one inch by one inch squares instead of two inch by two inch squares, but um, you can you can really mess around and just get get your hands dirty right off the bat and see, you know, if I want to print this part, which Stratasys machine is going to be able to help me do that the best. We also have Polyjet machines here. There's a few older machines that aren't currently available, but um, almost all the new machines rely on uh, GrabCAD Print as their slicer software. So we can go check out the new J55. This is a really cool printer because it has a round build area, which I had never seen before. Um, we just got one in our Pleasant Ridge office and we're excited to use it. So that's all done over here in the print area. If we go ahead and change our view to the schedule view, we can take a look and here are all the printers that are currently on my network. So I can go ahead and look and see, you know, here's, I just started this print job this morning. It was that one inch cube and it completed. It took 33 minutes on this machine. And uh, with the F123 series of FDM printers, you can actually go in and see there's, there's my little cube. And I could go out there and grab it if I wanted to, and my face would show up on the camera, but I'm not going to do that right now. You can also see this is a print job that I currently have printing. It's a set of four different cubes, and this picture will get updated every minute so that you can actually track your print jobs over time. There's, uh, you can go back in the history a little bit, and if you schedule prints further out in advance, you can do that as well, you can see prints in, out in advance. Another really cool aspect of this is I have this U print here and it's waiting for a part. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and send this little cube over to my printer. And without even being near the printer, it's gonna start the print job. And it probably won't be done by the time we get done presenting, but it'll be close. So 35 minutes or so. And then if we go back here, we can see that uh, it's getting scheduled up right now. It's in the queue. And in a couple minutes, it'll start printing. The last big thing here to show off is the, is the history. So um, here we can see that there's, you can go scroll through the entire history of your printer, see everything that it's ever printed, see how long it took, see how much material it used. Um, it's a really useful tool for looking back to see how much your printer is being utilized, where it's being utilized, and, um, you know, you can also export it as an Excel sheet so you can make pretty charts and graphs. And that's where I want to stop for now before we start diving into FDM. If we go back to our presentation. We can go ahead and take a look at, this is the screen that we just had. We started with the main navigation panel. So this is where we switched between print, schedule, and history. This is the project panel where you can insert models and assemblies. This was for changing orientations. Over here, the view modes panel was for switching between the sliced view, the project view, and then if there were any errors, they'd show up in this middle one. We've got this tools panel. This is where we're gonna get with the FDM for scaling, rotating, changing infill. This button here is for adding notes in case you, excuse me, in case you are sending this print job to a different person, you can add notes there. 
Down here in the printer panel, we could change printers and templates. Over here, this is where you log in to your GrabCAD account. So that GrabCAD account is going to um, coordinate your account with all the different printers you have access to. Here's a picture of the build tray that I took with the ruler next to it, and you can see the digital one on the right. And you, you, I went ahead and put a ruler next to it and measured out each of these squares is two inches by two inches. So that's really nice for getting a sense of scale for your print jobs. And like we mentioned, um, there's so many different accepted file types. You've got native CAD files, including SOLIDWORKS, Autodesk Inventor, CATIA. You can also include assemblies as well. There's normal old CAD files like STL, STEPS, Parasolids. And with PolyJet machines, you can actually print textures. And those textured files include OBJs, VRMLs, and 3MF files. Here's a different schedule view. This was a schedule view from our Detroit office. And you can see there's a lot, a lot of machines on this network. So um, you can view jobs from within your GrabCAD print server. You can actually cancel and pause print jobs in case you thought there was something going wrong. On the F123 series, you can see inside the build chamber. And the timeline allows you to see what's recently finished and what's upcoming. We didn't get to see this view earlier, but this is part of that history view. So um, if we switch back to GrabCAD, up here you can do more reports online. If you go there, you can see all these different reports like material usage over the lifetime of the printer. Um, you can search and sort within GrabCAD print. And with PolyJet machines, you can actually rerun successful print jobs straight from the history view. And like I mentioned, you can see more reports online. If anybody is running into any questions that they have, feel free to throw them in the chat box. We'll get to them at the end, but I know that this is a lot of information to get all in one moment, so. We're gonna go through an FDM printing example. With this, we're gonna kind of cover repairing files in GrabCAD print, going through the model options, the layer settings, infill, arranging your print jobs, reorienting parts, uh, applying support, and scaling your parts. Before we get into GrabCAD, I just wanna show off, um, some of this stuff is kind of self-explanatory, so it's easier to see it in the PowerPoint. So over here, we can go to analysis mode, and if we, if we insert models into our project and it shows up that they have errors, going into analysis mode allows us to fix those errors. So here I had a model that had self intersections that showed up as little pink triangles. I was able to repair that model and then that saves me down the line from having to reprint that. Um, also includes inverted normals and open faces, so. We also can change the model options here. If we want to duplicate a bunch of the same part, if we want to hide certain parts on our print tray, um, that's useful as well. Here in the layer settings, this is a little easier to see in the PowerPoint. You can change the layer thickness. So on some machines, you have to change the actual print tip that's in the printer, but with uh, the F123 series, you don't have to. So this was visualizing the different layer heights. You can see here, um, oh, this is the wrong picture. But at the 5,000 layer height, it takes 214 slices. And at the 10,000 layer height, it only takes 110. So um, you can visualize the differences between the layers. There's the infill settings where you can change the different types of infill um, that we have many different types available for FDM. There's sparse hexagonal, sparse double dense, solid. You can also thicken the, the body thickness of parts here. You can arrange parts so you can change the spacing of multiple parts on a tray and optimize the number of parts per tray if you're going to print a very large job. 
You can change the orientation of parts. You can also go into this uh, orient face to plane mode and then select faces on your 3D file and then select which plane you want that to, to face, which is a really useful way of reorienting. Then here is all the different types of support as well. Um, these are all different support algorithms. So it'll grow support from the bottom. You can see that surround. It's pretty self-explanatory. It surrounds your entire part. Uh, the smart support starts at a lower base and then it slowly extends outward. So it saves you some material. The box creates these pillars. All of these different supports can be useful in different circumstances. So you can also change the self-supporting angle. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And you can change the scale of your parts. So not all slicers allow you to change the scale just in an X, Y, or Z direction. Oftentimes it's only uniformly. So that's a really useful, uh, really useful tool to have here. So with all that said and done, let's go ahead and add a more complicated part here. Um, I've got two parts that I want to add. First is this gear. This is a, um, it's called a herringbone gear, which means that it's a, a gear made to mesh with um, another gear in its design. So if we go ahead and assemble this, you can see that all of these gears mesh together as an assembly. And this is actually a really interesting part because these gears, you could not, uh, you could not create this through any other method because of the way that the gears uh, mesh together. This has to be done in an additive layer by layer process. And you can see I had some errors show up. It says I can fix it in analysis mode. So if I go over here, I can go ahead and get the error details. It's going to look at these parts that it knows have an error. I can go ahead and just view the, the error parts. And if I zoom in, you can see really far down there, there was these self-intersecting triangles. So we can go ahead and press repair. And in just a few seconds, it's going to go ahead and do that for me. So I've had print jobs where I forgot to repair my part and it had a big gaping hole in it that resulted in basically a failed print. So now that they're repaired, we could go ahead and assemble it. And then we could start changing our settings. This example is a little more difficult to see some of the settings I want to change. So I'm going to insert another part. And I'll just go ahead and hide this part. So it'll still be there, but it's not going to show up on my assembly. I'm going to change down here my printer to the F370 template. Gives it a little more wiggle room. This is a part that is useful for testing uh, tapping holes. So one of the most interesting things you can do in GradCAD print is actually prepare a part for heat inserts. So if you have a if you have a parametric file in here, such as a SolidWorks file, I can go ahead and select this interface of this uh, circle. And I can do this apply insert and it's going to modify the thickness of my hole so that when I tap this hole or when I put it put in a heat set insert or another type of you know we can see we have heat set inserts helical helical inserts and then you can create your own so in grabcad I've actually modified my file in a way that it's going to, you know, I could have done this in SOLIDWORKS or whatever modeling program I did, but the fact that GrabCAD has it means that even if I forgot to take that into account, I can do it right here. If I wanted to slice preview, we can see how this hole is going to look different than all the other holes now. Sometimes the slicing takes a second, but You might be wondering what this little bow tie 
part here is on the F123 series, it creates this uh, little part here at the beginning and end of every layer. And that helps keep your print job more consistent. And get rid of any little dangly bits of plastic. So you can see here that the rest of these holes, there's only two beads of plastic surrounding them. So if I was gonna put something in there or tap that hole, I would get into this infill, which um, isn't always going to be airtight. And what I've been able to do is I've been able to actually fill this in with a solid core around it so that if I put in that heat set insert, um, it's going to have all this plastic to conform around it without damaging or interacting with the infill. That's one of the most useful parts of GrabCAD print. We go ahead and change the infill to something like a sparse infill. We can also see the changes done there. This shows up a little more dramatically. So now we can see you know, if you were going to tap this hole, there's not a lot of material for you to have to secure a screw or something that you're putting in there. So this extra material around the edges is very useful. Now I've had I've had people ask, you know, well, I know that I could tap a hole if it was printed like this, but what about like this? Because then the layers are going to be entirely different. And if we were to go ahead and slice this as it is now, you'll see that the circles aren't going to have the, the same type of beading around it um, since they're being printed as horizontal circles instead of vertical circles. So if we visualize all the layers, we can also see that all these holes need a bunch of support now. We can turn off support if we want to just see what's going on layer by layer. We can see, let's do this. So around the hole, there's, there's some, you know, there's three beads of plastic, but that still probably isn't going to be enough for all situations. So what we can do is we can go in here we go into our face settings, we can select this face and we can do make self supporting. And it's actually going to take that circle and turn it into a diamond. That diamond is able to be 3D printed without the need for support. So we could actually go and select a bunch of these, make them all self supporting. And then our support usage is going to go down by a lot. Now, if we go ahead and slice it, you can also use a teardrop shape. GrabCAD doesn't have that option, but if you want to create a self-supporting hole in your 3D prints, you can make it teardrop shaped as well. The diamond is a very useful, um, easy, easy to remember shape though. And we are done. So if we go ahead and look at all the layers, we re-add the support, we can see that there's still support for that hole that I had made earlier with the extra, the extra layers around it. That was for the heat set insert. But if we go ahead and look at all the layers, we can see that there's no support needed anywhere else now. If we go ahead and take the support material off, we can see that um, as we move through this, this is where the diamond shapes are going to be. And it's actually adding a lot of material around each of these diamonds. 
So all this solid material here is going to allow that part to be tapped and turned into a circle later on without interacting with your infill as well. So two different examples of actually changing your part in your slicer to make it easier to print. There's a few other features like that in here. You can change the surface thickness. You can avoid seams. Um, that's that's some of the most interesting uses of GrabCAD print when it comes to FDM. To uh, shift into the polyjet examples now, for polyjet prints, we're going to talk about three main factors. We're going to talk about coloring your print jobs, applying textures, and the color swatch tool. So with colors, polyjet prints are amazing because they have access to so many different colors and so many different ways of selecting colors. You can select colors based on whatever materials you have loaded. You can select materials straight from mixing loaded materials together. You can do the color picker, which um, is probably something that everybody recognizes where you've got this big color map here selecting colors. You can do CMYK values. This was recently added. People who are knowledgeable in the regular printing industry, 2D printing industry, know, know about these values. And then with Pantone colors, you can actually pick verified Pantone code colors, uh, which the Polyjet machines that are Pantone certified, they're certified to print those colors uh, very consistently. There's also glossy and matte finish. We'll talk about that. Looking at some textured files. To texture a file, you have to apply the texture in whatever modeling software you're doing beforehand, whether that's SolidWorks or Rhino. But you can insert um, OBJ, VRML, and 3MF files with textures, and they'll actually show up here. So this was an engine block that I was working on. Um, printing that I had some of my SOLIDWORKS SIM fellows at CATI do some simulation on this, and they were able to straight from SOLIDWORKS export the simulation file, and I was able to 3D print it um, later that day. So it's a really powerful tool to print textures. This is a cube that I set our logo on as a texture as well. And then we have the color swatch test, which is a tool that you can run where you can select a, an RGB color that you're interested in, print a bunch of different variants of that color uh, with different saturation, brightnesses, and hues. And then once you've got that printed out, you can actually compare it against a real life object to choose the color that's going to most accurately represent the color that you're trying to get. So. If we go ahead and go over here into GrabCAD, we can start a new project. Let's switch to the J55 template. So if we wanted to add, say, that engine block part. So this part is a VRML file that came straight from SolidWorks. thinking about it and it shows up very tiny for some reason so i'm just going to scale this up a little bit make that five inches and we've got our part so we can go ahead and reorient it to a more useful orientation we'll make that the bottom we can rotate it When it shows up red in the volume, that means that we've got parts on the outside of our print volume. So that lets me know, hey, why don't you bring that inside a little more? So with this part, if I go over here, the, the, the buttons on our right side here are a little different for PolyJet. So we've got the same analysis mode if we needed to repair our file. 
we have the uh, the main model view. When I go to tray settings, this is actually going to let me change the materials that I have loaded in my printer or my printer template. So if I wanted to simulate having Vero clear added so I could do transparent parts, I could go ahead and save that. And now I've got that loaded in my template. Here, this is where we would start to look at Right now, this has a texture on it, but if for some reason I wanted to change that to be something else, I could go ahead and apply a solid color now. So this is going to print purely Vero Cyan. We can go ahead and make it transparent if we wanted to. So it's going to print in a blue transparent color. We could make it glossy instead of matte. What that's going to do is um, you can't see a slice view with Polyjet. It's a little bit more complicated, but you can preview where there's going to be support using this little button up here. Everywhere there's support, the, the finish is going to be a little different. So if you want a consistent finish on your part, you can change this to matte. And that's going to actually surround the part with a thin layer of support material, giving you a more consistent finish if you wanted to, say, polish your part after printing it. Um, we could also go into here and add an assembly, such as, let's add this part in here. Let's go ahead and change the template to the, the newest and best printer that we have to offer, the J850. Well, it looks like my part came in with an error here. So if I want to go and fix that, I can go over here, repair the model. Just took about a second. I can go ahead and rotate this a little bit. Now with Polyjet, the build tray looks a little different. It's not made up of a bunch of squares. Each of these lines here, um, from the top here to the bottom, is going to be one path of your print head. So it's going to print left to right, go down, left to right, go down. So the your print job is going to finish much faster if you keep all of your parts in this upper region. That's going to reduce the amount of printing paths that your print head has to do. So we can go ahead and see that oh, this part here is an assembly. I can go ahead and disassemble it. And I can apply a bunch of different colors to each of these cubes if I wanted to. So I could go in here and apply Pantone. I could go ahead and make this a red color. Make that a blue color. Go ahead and mix materials if I wanted to get like a purpley color. Oh, I lost good grab cat. Let's see. All right. I can go ahead and reassemble this part now and those changes that I made to the part are going to show up here. You can see that since I made this part textured, I put the CATI logo at the bottom of it. Um, that actually made this a one solid part. So um, having a texture applied to it changed it a little bit, but not by This used to be about 64 cubes and then applying a texture merge to those together. So, well, that's a quick overview of everything. Oh, except for the color swatch tool. I wanted to show you guys that. So up here in apps, we can go ahead and select color swatch tool. And if we change the number of hues that we want to look at to say just one, I can go ahead and Pick a color up here, and I can change the colors that are going to show up to try and color match best 
something in real life. So anybody who's tried to print something in color match, it knows how difficult that can be. But thankfully, this tool is now natively part of GrabCAD, so it's very useful for that. So if we go back to our PowerPoint, we can see we remember our challenges. One of them was slicers are difficult to use. They're complicated. This is a very easy to use slicer. You don't have to select any of those options of nozzle temperature or stuff like that. It's very simple, easy to use. When we insert bad files, bad STLs, they were able to get repaired. That's not something that every slicer offers and it's, it's saved me more than once. You can coordinate your machines from anywhere. So if I wanted to run a print job remotely, if I needed to print something overnight and I was at home, I could actually send that file there to any number of my machines and start get it printing right away. I can actually manipulate my parts within the software to create a better print. I can save on support material by making self-supporting holes or I can make my heat set inserts or my taps uh, work out better by increasing the amount of material around each hole. And lastly, for color matching, you can use the color swatch tool, which is a very useful tool when it comes to getting your print jobs to look exactly how you want them to in real life. Yeah, thank you all for your time.